Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of Derpscraft where today we have a ton of things to do. Well first off I got the inner wall done off camera. I, I could have made a time lapse but I didn't because you guys saw that already last episode for the outer wall. It was basically the same process. I actually overestimated how much stone I would need and well let's look at how much stone bricks I've placed down shall we. And if I look over here I have placed down 130,000 stone brick blocks yeah that's not all of it was placed here obviously you know so what did i just do with my zoom key but uh some of it was uh placed at warner and some of it was placed elsewhere and stuff but most of it was placed here and yeah that's a lot of blocks but you know what's a lot more blocks this well it's not here right now but this place needs to have a ground uh, needs to have a floor or a ground or whatever because well, it's a floating city, but the city itself is not going to be floating. We're actually going to have grass and stuff like that over here, uh, which means we've got to fill this in. And I did a little bit of math and turns out that we are going to need a grand total of 800,000 plus blocks. I don't remember the exact number. Essentially, it's probably a little bit more than 800,000. So I'm going to estimate and say that we need a million dirt blocks to fill in this region. A million. That's a lot of blocks. This over here, that's only 130,000. That is one tenth of what this is gonna need. But the worst part isn't even the amount of blocks we're gonna need. It's the time taken to acquire those blocks and place them down because at the rate at which I finished the wall, this would probably take us three or four months to finish the ground alone, which is which is bad, okay? That's bad. And, and the server's lagging. It's probably gonna kick me out or not. But it would take me three or four months to finish this whole thing, which is unideal. So in today's episode, what we want to do is put in the behind the scenes. Well, it's not really behind the scenes, but I want to do the groundwork. Yes, I think that's that's the word groundwork, framework, whatever. We want to do the things that are going to enable us to get the dirt a little bit faster. But before we do that, I actually got this parrot. Uh, I found this parrot in the jungle and I tamed her and I brought her here. Wait, you, you've seen this parrot before, haven't you? Yes, you have. I asked for names. And I got name suggestions, which are in this chest over here. Mitsuha, Grey, Chaos, and Yuna are the names I chose But uh, from the suggestions I got. But the issue is, the person who suggested Mitsuha happens to be on this server, okay? It's, it's none other than Valkyrie. And, and guess what he did? I asked for suggestions. I didn't ask you to name my parrot, but I'm not gonna say the name out, okay? I'm not gonna call her that yet because, you know, like, unless she's been called by that name, by her master or owner or whatever, she's not gonna do it that it's her name. So we can change her name w without her even realizing. That's the, that's the plan. So the way we're gonna do that is I wanna do a little bit of a lucky draw kind of system where... We have a dispenser and a lever and we take this stuff, boom, put it in and we flick the lever and what's the name we got? Yuna, yes! <laughs> That's not gonna lie, that was the name I was hoping I'd get. So Yuna is what we're gonna call the parrot. And boom, I christen the Yuna. You know the parrot. You know the grey parrot. But I actually like these names a lot. Chaos, grey. I mean, grey, grey is not that great a name. So, grey, you know, you can sit there. But Mitsuha and Chaos. I think those are good names for parrots or whatever else. So, next time we get a pet, I think I'm gonna na name them Mitsuha and Chaos. Hey, I got, I got a cat head. A calico cat's head. That's cool. See, in order to reduce the time taken to get all of that dirt, we need to understand what uh, increases the time taken to get all that dirt. And a place where I waste a lot of time is repairing my tools. Well, I have one shovel and getting that repaired by going back and forth to the nether, that is gonna take a lot of time. One of the best ways to reduce time over here is gonna be by making more shovels with efficiency 4, unbreaking 3 and mending. I don't, I don't want them all to be netherite shovels because Netherite is not that much more useful than diamond in uh, reg uh, with regards to grinding. I mean, it has a little bit more durability. But apart from that, when you're working in the overworld with dirt, 
diamond shovels with efficiency for undertaking three men and mending is probably the best you'll ever need so we want to get tons of that and by tons i mean tons and tons of that so that we don't have to keep going back to the nether in order to get our stuff repaired and what is the easiest way to get that many shovels well i'll give you a hint it's right there in the back that is our villager breeder and we can get shovels by trading with toolsmiths and we can also get mending books and such by trading with librarians. This is going to be one of the best ways in which we can get ourselves some awesome tools. Right, I also forgot to mention that we have a ton of diamonds from mining all of that stone. But I assume that we are probably not going to have as much by the end of this episode. I have a certain design in mind. Uh, it's based off of um, Logical Geek Boys design but... It's not exactly that design. I don't even know if this works, okay? I'm just gonna build it in survival first time, which if you're watching, don't do that, okay? This is this is done by trained professionals. You, you, don't attempt this at home, okay? <laughs> no, I'm not a trained professional, but this is probably gonna go horribly wrong, but I'm gonna give it a try anyways. Why did I space anyways out like that? All right, so this guy just, just appeared out of nowhere and now they're looking at each other. I. I have no idea where he came from, like he couldn't have come from the breeder, he couldn't have come from there, he couldn't have come from the iron farm, like where did this guy come from? And and now he's lost his workstation, I'm gonna break the thing before he gets his job back. Yeah, just, 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 what is he doing? Just, just, just walking off into the distance, like, who does he think he is? Well, I am done with the system and it looks a little bit like that. <laughs> That's probably the worst camera angle ever. Why do I keep doing that? But it looks a little bit like this. It's built out of iron blocks because iron is the thing I can get most of. Is it a flex? Yes, it is. But yes, this should work. It's based off of logical geek boys design, as I said before. And his is probably a lot wor worse. <laughs> his is probably a lot better than mine. But... Yeah, the concept is the same. Essentially, you have villages here. You get them here by using the track over there. Mine is very manual where you're going to have to replace those blocks and things like that. And then you basically have them over here. You can use this lever to send them down uh, or bring them up. And essentially, what you do over here is you have a, a zombie over here. So they'll get zombified and then you can cure them. The reason why we would need to zombify them and then cure them is because... Uh, that's going to reduce the prices, not only for the villagers that you do it for, but also for the other villagers because these guys are going to, uh, because of the height of the bed, you know, these guys are going to gossip with the other people and they're going to say good stuff about this, which means that um, the prices are going to drop. So right now, uh, the functional aspect of this is done. The only part that's uh, left to do is fill in all the workstations and bring in the villagers and the zombies. So I actually did capture the zombie. I have him over here. Hope I renamed him. How did he? Wait, what? Uh, renamed zombies are not supposed to despawn. I actually had another zombie and he despawned too. Why? This is very confusing because and annoying because capturing that zombie was a lot of work but essentially we are gonna bring him to the chamber at the back and then we can fill in all the villages as well and i'll be back with you guys once i'm done with that well i have all of the mobs in place so over here we have the zombie so yeah he's called brian and he's the one who'll be converting our villages and stuff we have brian there and we also have all the villages here getting brian was probably the hardest part and well, over here, the villagers, they seem to be taking a random amount of time to choose their workstations. Like, just a few minutes ago, a lot of them hadn't chosen their workstations yet. These are the villagers that came in last, obviously, but these are the ones that got uh, the chose their professions first. So, I have no idea how this works, but it should it should work right now, okay? But we, we also need to cycle through villagers, vill vill I can't speak, villagers and stuff, and... Yeah, I, I keep hearing sounds. Do you guys hear sounds? Like clanking sounds? I don't know. All of them have professions. We've got to start trading with them. I'm going to trade with them for a little while. Try and lower their trades and then be back with you guys once we have desirable villagers. 
All right, so Brian seems to be a little bit dumb. The, the villager's right there. Why is he not attacking him? Is it because he's in a minecart? I feel like it might be because he's in a minecart. If I break the minecart... Uh, no, that was... That was very, very bad. Why? Why though? Well, I have finished putting in the villagers in their places. It took way longer than I expected. Probably like four or five hours just to do this. <laughs> yeah, I grossly underestimated the time that I need to do this. And the amount of villagers too. I think we cycled through nearly all... Yeah, there's more now. But we cycled through all of the villagers that were there when I made this. Uh, when I finished making this yesterday night. But... Yeah, we have two farmers so that we can sell potatoes, carrots and stuff and get emeralds. Then we have, um, as you can see here, yeah, like, look at this, okay? All these guys, they're just giving us, like, one or two useful books. And then there's this one guy, like, Sharpness uh, 4, Thorns 3, Unbreaking 3, and Fortune 2. Like, what? It actually didn't take me long to get a mending guy, uh, but it took me way longer to be able to get... Um, a, a guy with efficiency, which is what I really wanted, efficiency and unbreaking. So instead I tried working with a toolsmith and I got uh, this trade. So we can combine four of this to get a good shovel and then we can combine that with mending. Well, tools are not the only problem when it comes to saving time. Another issue is storage. I have to keep moving shulker boxes back and forth between Varner and uh, the place where I'm mining. And that takes a lot of time. So to reduce that, I'm going to be going shulker hunting i'm gonna get uh, enough shulkers and then i'll be back with you guys in just a second i have been grinding and i have gotten all the stuff that i said i would get well over here we have an entire shulker box full of efficiency for unbreaking three and uh, mending shovels which will allow us to insta mine dirt and repair them if we need to and in this we have the loot from a shulker raid uh, i raided two end cities and that's all the loot that we got. But yeah, believe it or not, that took a lot longer than you'd expect. That took me like two or three days, which which is... A, I was not expecting that, but yeah. Apart from that, we also have another thing to look at. If I... I think I have it in my under chest. This is, this is embarrassing. I should have been a little bit more prepared. So, off-camera Valkyrie paid me like a netherite sword and... An Elytra to get him a Diorite Eradication Kit and we got him exactly that. We got him a Diorite Eradication Kit. So we can drop this off at his base. So this is Valkyrie's base if you haven't seen it. So I'm just gonna leave his Diorite Eradication Kit somewhere over here. This seems like a good spot and boom, we're done. Oh, I also forgot to mention I have this map now and yeah, I've locked it. So this is gonna stay like this forever even if we add more stuff so we can make more maps and keep track of our progress from when Varner was this circle to when it's gonna become a huge city. I am not gonna lie, this looks amazing at night. <laughs> this is the mall that random smart guy was working on and it's been abandoned and that's exactly how it feels. It feels like an abandoned laboratory or something. It, it, it looks amazing, <laughs> like in its abandoned ruined state with all these floating mushrooms and all that. But... <laughs> But we are here to finish it, yeah, because I would like to see more projects finished on the server and I also want to set up a shop and, you know, I, I just thought I would set it up inside the mall. And I have plans and that's why I am really, really excited. It, it, it is a little bit tempting to leave this abandoned like this because just, just look at it, it looks so cool. But yeah, I, he, he, random smart guy did give me instructions as to how, how to build this, but I... I understand nothing, so I'm just gonna try my best to do something good over here and and hopefully he's not gonna be mad. But first things first, as you can see, there isn't much room in here, so yeah, we're gonna have to push this mountain back. As you can see, I have mined out this entire area and also started planning out what we're gonna be building over here. But on an unrelated note, uh, at the time of recording this video, we actually hit 100 subscribers. That is, that is amazing. That's like... A hundred people, a hundred people, that's like 10 rows of 10 people. Amazing. Thank you so very much. That is, um, that's really amazing. But yeah, let's get to building this in the form of a third person time lapse.
and boom, we have ourselves the Derpscraft Mall. I I really like how this uh, came together, especially this part. To be honest, I love how this part looks. You know, you you can see the turtles swimming around, the fish swimming around. Really amazing. I love the statue as well. The, the animals were the hardest part. You know, getting them over here, it was it was a it was a headache, but. I also got the pig there. Uh, this is actually a tribute to Derpscraft Season 1. If you look back on my Season 1 thumbnail, there was actually a pig stuck on top of a random tree. And that pig was actually on that tree throughout the season. It never despawned. I don't know why. I don't think pigs can spawn on trees anymore. But it was, it was so cool. We had to immortalize it in some way. But yeah, we also have two fountains over here. I didn't do much else uh, over in, uh, in the front or in the back. I had some plans, you know, I wanted to uh, put some seating uh, areas over here, but uh, didn't really have time for that. I also did this on the bottom. I think I like how it turned out. It looks a little bit reinforced, but also a little bit modern, you know, with all the vibrancy from the leaves. The inside of this, um, there were supposed to be staircases and stuff, but I just gave up, to be honest. I uh, I gave up on building them, so instead we have enderpearls. So if you know exactly where you're going, four enderpearls should technically be enough for you to uh, get around. So if I throw one there, we are over here, for example. So uh, you can set up shops over here. You can um, do all sorts of stuff. But yeah, we also have... Um... <laughs> okay, that was, that was weird. But yeah. You can also look into the fish tank. From over here really cool I love I love things like this I love building differently in Minecraft I know we have the um, I know we have Vanur which is uh, I I do like Vanur but so uh, I had to design this off the top of my head and I really enjoyed the process of doing it I think but yeah we also have this little guy I I think we just uh, went over this too quickly. It's it's supposed to be like a mascot type thing. Can you can you guys see it? It's got like eyes and stuff. Yeah. And over here is the dirt exchange. So this is a place where people can come. Oh right. And then there's this door whose uh, redstone is actually really simple, but it took me way too long because I was over complicating it quite a bit. But yeah, I did manage to get it done though. But yeah, welcome to the dirt exchange. Here, you can leave three stacks of dirt in exchange for one diamond. And all of these, all of these chests are filled with uh, diamonds. And yeah, it, I, I had like a stack and a, a bit of diamond blocks when I started. And now this is all I have. But yeah, I assume that not all of these diamonds are going to get sold. But I do want them to be, to be honest, because we need a ton of dirt. And I think the dirt exchange... Um, is a relatively quick way to get it and the whole place does look really really cool with shaders on it does uh, shaders do make it a little bit harder to uh, look inside these things but I think yeah just yeah just look at it. it looks really spectacular and the black glass as well it's it's quite opaque but I think it's a little bit different than uh, what the original um, intention for this was uh, but it still looks pretty cool i think but yeah i hope you all enjoyed this video if you did please be sure to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe but thanks for watching guys and i'll see you all next time goodbye